Here's our first example from the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus Part 2. It says evaluate d dx, so the derivative of the integral of x squared dx with lower limit square root of x, upper limit sine of x. So you might be asking, you know, when do I know it's Fundamental Theorem Part 2? It's when the limits are functions, okay? If these were just numbers, that's Fundamental Theorem Part 1, and in fact, if you take the derivative of the area into the curve, you're just going to get zero back because um, it's a constant number, right? So these have to be functions in order for fundamental theorem to, um, well, actually, I mean, you could still do it. It'd still be fundamental theorem part two and you get zero back. It's just, you know, it's fundamental theorem part two when these are actual functions with X in it, because then you have to multiply by the derivative when you plug it in. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. Let's go over the steps. I like going over steps because they always get you to the right answer. Step one is to plug in the upper limit and multiply by its derivative. Um, so what is our upper limit? Sine of x. Okay, so see how there's the function is x squared. That's our little f. In fact, I will even label that so you can kind of relate it to the official definition. Um, the official definition of fundamental theorem part two. Wherever there is an x, I'm replacing it with sine of x for my first step. And then I'm multiplying by the derivative of what I plugged in. Okay, so I plugged in sine of x, okay, but then I have to multiply by its derivative, which is cosine of x. That's all step one is. Plug in the upper limit, multiply by its derivative. Okay, step two is to subtract the lower limit and plug in its derivative. It's basically the same as step one, except with the bottom limit, and don't forget your subtraction sign. So this in the middle will always be minus no matter what. And that's, that comes from fundamental theorem one, right? Big F of B minus big F of A. So lower limits, square root of X. That's what we're going to plug in uh, to our function after we put our subtraction sign. And we're going to multiply by its derivative. So the derivative of square root of X. Remember, this is just X to the one half. Use the power rule. The derivative is one half X to the negative one half. And that's it for step two. And then basically after this, all we're going to do is just simplify this entire thing. And that will give us the answer for our first fundamental theorem part two example. Uh, so what I will do is take that second part, put it under one and make it make, make the exponent positive, simplify this out. This is basically x to the first, right? And x to the first divided by x to the one half that's on the bottom here is just x to the one half, which becomes square root of x again. And this is going to be our final answer. Really, it was not much to do with the first part, right? It's just sine squared. Uh, of x times cosine of x. So this is our final answer for fundamental theorem part one. When this is my upper limit and this is my lower limit and I plug them in and take and multiply by the derivatives, we get sine squared of x t times cosine of x minus one half squared of x. That's it for our first example of the fundamental theorem of calculus part two and applying it. If you have any questions about this example, let me know.